Hello, this is you one. Welcome to another tutorial. Today, my five must know OPC tricks. Let's go! Okay, tip number one. Uh, tempo. You can set the tempo on the OPC in uh, various different ways. Uh, you can, for instance, uh, turn the dial. I will uh, show you this by playing one of the sequences I have here. If you press uh, the metronome and you turn the dial, the green dial, you set the tempo. You can also do this by uh, press the metronome and to write in the tempo yourself. Uh, let's say that I want uh, 110 BPM. Metronome 110. You can also set the tempo by tapping the tempo, and this is my favorite because I like to feel the tempo when I'm doing stuff on the OPC. So uh, if you're playing the sequence and you press the metronome, one, two, three, four, the OPC can feel the tempo and it sets the tempo for you. Yeah, so tap tempo, it's a really good thing on the OPC, I think. Number two, copy tracks to different patterns. Uh, you can copy a pattern um, to another pattern uh, simply by pressing P for pattern, and then shift, and then choosing where you want to copy it to. Uh, let's say I want to copy it to this light track here. And then I have copied the first uh, pattern to this pattern. Yeah, this pattern and that pattern, these are the same. But uh, let's listen to uh, the second pattern here. Yeah, it's simply the uh, Mellotron flute. And let's say that I want to use the piano from the first pattern uh, on the second pattern. Uh, what I want to do is I want to copy the track, the piano track from the first pattern to the second one. Uh, then I simply choose the piano track on the first pattern and I press P for pattern and shift three times, one, two, three. And then I press the second pattern. And then let's listen to the second pattern. So now I have copied the piano part from the first pattern to the second one. Uh, this is very good, I think. I use this all the time when I'm building tracks because I want to use a certain track on uh, multiple patterns, then I use this function. So press P and then uh, shift three times, one, two, three, and you press the pattern where you want to copy the track to. This is very effective, I think. Tip number three. Uh, it has to do with the ARP track. Um, this is the ARP track. And when I play this now, it sounds like this. Or I can play a whole chord. Uh, 
Uh, ARPs are really good, but I don't want to use them all the time. Sometimes I just want to use this truck as a normal synth truck. So a, a great thing to do is to disable uh, the ARP track. Or not the track, uh, but the ARP function. Uh, you can do this simply by choosing this uh, blue light mode here and if you turn this green dial all the way to the left so that it hits number one it's just a normal synth lead track or whatever you want to call it so if I play the sequence Can play it. And I can use the ARP track just as another synth track uh, if I want to add a, uh, some kind of melody to uh, my sequence. So this is really good. The ability to disable uh, the ARP is a really good thing. So one more time, you go to the ARP track and then you turn the green dial in the blue mode all the way to the left. And when you've done that, you can play the ARP track just as another synth track. So that's a simple way to disable the ARP, I think. Okay. Uh, uh, my tip number four has to do with the keyboard. Uh, this is the piano that I'm playing right now. And when you're playing the keyboard, uh, you can um, play in different octaves, uh, of course. This is just a C major scale, and if I uh, press plus, I will get the next octave. I go back to the first one, and I can have a lower octave if I press minus. So that is a function that probably most of you already know about. But what I uh, just explored the other day is this. If you play the sequence... Yeah, you play the sequence and you hit shift and then plus or minus and then you can shift the octave live, I mean when you're playing the sequence and this is a really good thing for live playing I think that you can shift the octave in that sort of way to do it. And uh, another thing that I like to do is actually to play the keyboard live. Um, let's say that I have this uh, piano sequence and I go to my bass. Um, I can play this live, I don't have to sequence uh, everything and this might be easier if you connect a MIDI keyboard of course, but I can play the bass to the piano part live without even sequencing it. Yeah, uh, now the piano played in the high octave, and that's nice as well. But as I said, you can play the instruments live, and I think you should take advantage of this when you're doing some live stuff to actually play some of the instruments, and uh, you don't have to sequence them all the time. This is a good thing, I think, uh, that you can do. Yeah, that was tip number four. Okay, tip number five. Uh, has to do with parameters. Uh, you can use parameter locks. Uh, record something uh, 
while you're playing the sequence. Uh, this is the piano sequence and let's say I want to add some um, delay uh, effect uh, a curve when I'm uh, turning the dial. Then I can use the parameter lock and I do this by pressing record and turning the dial while I play the sequence. And if I want to delete this uh, from this sequence, I just hit record and stop. And I wait until the light has filled uh, all of the sequence. Yeah. And now I deleted that uh, specific parameter lock. Uh, I can record my parameters like that, but I can also um, use them temporarily uh, by tweaking a parameter while I'm playing the sequence. And uh, if I want to do it just temporarily, I can hit shift. And when I let go of the shift button, uh, the effect um, turns off. So then it's back to normal again. And this is very good, I think, for live playing. If you want to have an effect just uh, temporarily when you're playing uh, the sequence, then this can be very effective. Uh, I would also advise you to use, of course, the push-in effects. Shift and the effect. Yeah, so uh, use the parameter locks uh, to record a parameter or you can use it temporarily uh, as well uh, by using shift and then turn the dials. Uh, or use the push in effects to get some live effects um, in your playing. Uh, you can also uh, use the performance track and uh, this is also very effective for this uh, to add some effects uh, to your tracks. Well, these are my most useful tips. Please give me your best OPZ tips as a comment or just tell me what you think of this video and like and subscribe to support the channel. Have a great day. Bye.